in there, it feels like, you know, the people like recognize you and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, that's, that's cool. So, um, so it's on. Okay, we're rolling? Yeah. Right so on. my name's Jeff. Jeff, nice to meet you. What's my your... name is Colin. Colin? Yes. Okay. So, initial reaction, what do you think about that question? What do you think happens after we die? Well, I think that change happens after we die. So, you know, the specifics of what exactly that entails, uh, I think varies a lot from person to person depending on like your, um, you know, experience growing up and like the things that you've had in your life. But I think at the end of the day, what everybody agrees on is that something happens. Like there's a change that occurs. Yeah. And that, that's, well, that's really true. what I think about. <laughs> I mean, even the people that don't believe anything, yeah. you know, like lights out, I guess that is a change. For sure. Um, yeah. So I follow a philosophy known as uh, secular Buddhism. Okay. So um, basically the perspective of that is, is that you want to focus on like what's happening in the moment uh -huh. to kind of, uh, I'm losing my words, <laughs> but basically you shouldn't trouble yourself with things that aren't going to, sorry, I'm a little camera that shy. Are kind of, <laughs> I could turn it off if you want. Oh no, but, it's okay. Um, maybe things that are beyond your control? Or? Yeah, no, exactly. That's exactly right. Yeah. So, um, the fact that change happens is really all that's essential for you to know. And okay. so thinking beyond that can only really cause you like stress, you know, like, yeah. oh man, what happens? I don't know what happens that can worry. You. But if you accept that change happens and whatever that change is, is outside of your control uh -huh. can be freeing. In a way. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Do you have so secular Buddhism? Tell me more about that. Like, did you were you raised in that? No, or? I uh, I've, I kind of adopted it by doing a lot of reading uh -huh. um, of, of different books, like a book called The Issue at Hand, which is uh, uh, basically kind of an introduction to Buddhism. Um, and the way that the Buddha originally uh, crafted the philosophy of Buddhism was around secular ideas that you can experience for yourself. So I like talking about this with people who are religious because that means that you don't have to not be a Christian or uh, a, you know a Catholic in order to follow these principles. They don't interfere. They're not mutually exclusive. Yeah. You know. So like, I started reading a lot of these books that talk about how suffering in the human experience is inevitable, um, and that that's okay. It doesn't necessarily mean that you deserve it. Yeah. Something like that. It's just something that happens to everybody. And allowing it to occur and understanding it for what it is is the best way to alleviate that suffering. And that's really the root of the philosophy. Okay. So the highest good of, of it, though, is kind of like a stress relief? I would or, say so. uh, it's like, yeah. You know, like like avoiding the, like the stress of worrying about the... So, so um, would you say you believe in... God or a higher power, I know, I'm pretty sure uh, most traditional Buddhists don't, right? Like there's a an emptying of yourself. Mm -hmm. right? So I think in my understanding, so I'm not like an expert or anything, but yeah. um, from what I've read, there are different, there's a lot of different types of Buddhists, some that are, that have a lot of metaphysical beliefs, um, some that don't necessarily have a lot of metaphysical beliefs. Mm -hmm. um, the secular side uh, does not have a lot of met metaphysical beliefs. Um, for example, like I don't necessarily believe in reincarnation, whereas some Buddhists would. Okay. Um, but I think it's really about uh, your personal experience in the now. Um, and then when you address that sort of existentialism and kind of real, realign your focus to what's in the moment, mm -hmm. you free yourself of that stress. And then when you do so, you kind of become a better person towards other people around you. Yeah. As a consequence. Yeah. I can I can see that. Um, I was just talking with a young lady, when was that, yesterday or the day before, who, um, she, she grew up Jewish, but she doesn't want, really doesn't want to believe. She hopes that there's nothing else that we die oh, and lights out. Gotcha. Uh, she wants to, you know, she wants to put everything into this present life mm -hmm. without thoughts of a, of a life to come. And, uh, um, and one of the things that was 
you know, that, that she was looking forward to not having anymore was guilt. Mm. So, so it's like, okay, if, if I was suffering from guilt, you know, over something, mm-hmm. for her it was like, it's just even societal guilt, not necessarily from God, because she's kind of like, believes God is not a personality that would make us feel guilty, I but see. more like societal guilt. But just the, the, the relief from that, you know? So, like, what, um, Colin, what, what would you say does cause that stress? So, like, when you think about the future, like, what would be, like, like it sounds like you, at, at first it sounded like you do believe you have a spirit. Like, when your body dies, there's something that will continue on. Now I'm not so sure because you're gotcha because you don't believe in reincarnation. <laughs> so, but reincarnation is actually carnate means the flesh, right? So, do you believe you'll have a spirit that maybe would just continue on in a spirit form? So, the way that I look at it is that I don't necessarily think I'm qualified to know. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So, like, in terms of like an afterlife or thing, when I say change occurs, that just means that I know something's going to happen, whether that something is lights out, like you were describing yeah. before, yeah. or, you know, maybe I reincarnate as a whale. Or maybe yeah. I'm another person, or maybe I go to heaven or hell. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, something happens. Um, but the idea that it's beyond your control, so the stress comes from thinking, oh, I can yeah. maybe control it, or exactly, but, but let it be. Let me get a, a little bit more of a localized example. Okay. Um, so let's say you're on a date with somebody, or about to go on a date with somebody, mm-hmm. and that person does not show up. You might think to yourself, man they stood me up they must be like an awful person um you know something like that or maybe you might think maybe i did something yeah. that made that person not want to show up yeah but in reality what are the facts that you know i'm here and they are not yeah maybe they're not here because they had an emergency yeah. maybe they're not here their phone died they can't call me exactly you know yeah. something like that happened and so what accounts What's most stressful to that person who got stood up in that situation isn't the situation, yeah. but the stories yeah. that they come up with in their head to explain the situation. Yeah. So really, what it's about is focusing on the facts that you know that are in front of you, yeah. um, and then not trying to think too much beyond that, because once you do, you start getting into this rabbit hole of like, what if, what if, what if, yeah. and it, it kind of devolves into like a you know, unhealthy situation. I, I get that. It sounds like that uh, you've heard the saying, Lord, help me to change the things I can and mm. not worry about the things I can't and the wisdom to know the difference. You've heard yes. that. I, I'm sure I'm <laughs> I'm getting it mixed up, but... I, I but know what you mean, though. Yeah, so, it's, so it sounds like a really practical philosophy for living in peace. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's helped me like a yeah. lot in terms. Now, did of, you come from a religious background? Or? Yeah, I grew up uh, Roman Catholic. Uh huh. Um, but it, after a while, I kind of fell out of it just for like personal reasons. Um, and, but I think that it's okay. So what I like about secular Buddhism is that it allows me to practice like a spirituality without necessarily having to ascribe to like a metaphysical philosophy. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's good. I think people should practice. Uh, like spirituality um, in their own way um, yeah. and not necessarily have to be confined to believing in metaphysics in order to to, to feel like they could do that. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, I think so. Do you, would you say as a Catholic you had a belief in God and there was a point where you didn't? Or When I was a Catholic, I definitely did. Uh-huh. Um, and, you know, after as I was growing up, I started like feeling like maybe the stories that uh, I was being told, you know, I, I was confirmed in everything. Yeah. Um, didn't really make sense to me. Um, and now, now I don't want to come off as like, if you believe it, you know, I don't, I, then that's bad or anything. Of course not. Like, right. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. But a lot of people do. But, uh, of course. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's certainly yeah, valid. But it didn't make sense as far as the purpose of the stories or the, no, the purpose is, is something I generally agree with. Uh-huh. Um, like, you know, do unto others as you would want done to yourself is, is of course, the golden rule for all philosophies. Um, and I, yeah. I think that that's uh, a good thing, generally. It's just that the specifics of the stories. Yeah. Like... Um, the historical Yeah, nature. exactly. Like, maybe the, I don't... 
just because I don't believe the stories in particular, that doesn't necessarily mean that that invalidates the message that they're trying to tell. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So just just like, oh, that's pretty far-fetched, looking at it as a bunch of collection of, uh, like, not fairy tales, but because that kind of took demeaning, but... Of course. Um, myths. Myths, I guess that'd be the word. Yeah, um, I mean, like, you know, I, I've heard that Moses legends. lived to be, like, 150 years old, which to me seems like a little far-fetched, but that doesn't mean that the stories he's involved in aren't beneficial for people to know. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and would you, so so along with that, you lost the faith that God exists, or? Uh, well. Is it like, so I'm sorry, to, I don't want to interrupt, but is it like the lack of belief in miracles caused you to not believe in God or the lack of belief in God caused you not to believe in the miracles? See what I'm saying? I do see what you're saying. Um, so I think that kind of like what I was saying earlier, it's not, so I'm not qualified to know yeah. um, if there, if there is a God. Um, I, I think really from where I moved to, there was a time where I was like, no, there's definitely not. But as, as I've gotten older, I think that... You're a little militant with you. With you. <laughs> um, you and, don't seem like the militant type, but... <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> but as I've, I've gotten older, um, I don't know whether or not that there is. Now, I think that the stories that, you know, have, have some... Like the, the miracles situation, that yeah. maybe I don't believe that they actually happen. Yeah. That might lead me to believe that there might not be a God. So that, that's kind of where so it's I probably am. Yeah, so probably the, the far-fetchedness of the miracles of the Bible uh -huh. leads one to believe God. And it, I don't believe in God for all that matter. Yeah, yeah. or like may, this isn't enough of, uh, like enough evidence for me to say without a doubt 100% that there is an afterlife. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think if, if we did, if we were like without a doubt 100%, I mean, for even if myself as a Christian, then it would mean that I don't need faith. True. So, so the way I look at it is, I have a reasonable faith, uh -huh. but a faith nonetheless. So, in other words, and I guess the best way I can explain it is, I could give evidence for my belief to the, like the Bible. Really, it, it basically says there's enough evidence here for you to believe. You have all you need but you're not going to get all you want, mm. if that makes sense. Gotcha. So, like, if I'm going to be a skeptic, yeah, I'm not going to find all I want because the, the goal lines keep changing, you know? Yeah. You, you know, you, you satisfy a skeptic with some evidence, and then they're like, yeah, but I want more, you know? And so it's, it's like, okay, well, what, what, would, <laughs> what would be sufficient to believe, you know? And uh, so, so that's, that's pretty much like even how jesus comes across even even his parables you know he says you know the, the disciples ask him well why do you teach in parables you know and he says because so some will believe and some will it'll just pass over their head you know so in other words i think what he's saying is those who want to believe there's something here for you to believe but if you don't want to you know it, it's you're not going to understand these these parables you know um, so I kind of see it that way, you know, okay. like, um, I, I do want to say, um, so you, you've said a couple times that you're not qualified. Mm -hmm. Do you think anyone's qualified or? Mm, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> for, I mean, if everybody had, has, I, I would say, I, I don't if I'm not qualified to know, I don't think I'm qualified to, to say if Even other people are qualified. <laughs> you got a point there. I mean, <laughs> I would I would say I would I would doubt I would doubt yeah. it personally. I mean, but so for me, yeah. um, the <laughs> the qualification or as far as far as like do I believe? So I believe the miracles. I have no problem with the miracles of the Bible just because I have no problem with God's existence. Yeah. So in other words, if God exists and wants to bend the r very rules that he invented you know because i would believe science and laws of nature and physical laws are all created by god this whole order world order is made by god and so if he wants to break into that world in a different way for a to make a point of some sort 
I have no problem with that. For sure. See what I'm saying? So, yeah. like, if Jesus is able to walk on water, you know, he, he makes a point by <laughs> right. doing that, exactly. you know? So, so uh, yeah, so I guess my confidence about the miracles or, you know, I mean, does that mean I don't believe in science? No, of course I believe in right. science. But and And... Do I believe it's impossible for someone to walk on the water? Yes, it's impossible unless God's involved, right. you know? So I haven't rejected science by believing in the miracles. I'm saying this is beyond science. It's metaphysical, you know, exactly. beyond the laws of nature. So, but I guess burden of proof or burden, like, is it my job to figure God out as a person and, and that would be approaching God from a, a man-centered system of finding knowledge, which is basically called science, okay. you know? Yeah. Could I scientifically figure God out? Or does God reveal himself to man, including me, you know? Right. And so then, so, so what I'm saying is, I believe, yes, God has revealed himself through, and God would reveal himself through maybe one of the world religions because you know he's not going to just reveal himself to me you know little old me <laughs> I, if i'm going to believe something it should be something that you know god has revealed himself to a lot of people you know right so then i then i'm left with like kind of comparing the different religions and kind of seeing you know which ones are make sense to me you yeah. know so so i guess what I, all that all that to say is is um I'm, no, I'm not qualified to determine truth about God. All I can do is, for me as a Christian, is to read the Bible and see how has God revealed himself throughout history and to, and to make, to have ideas about God based on that, yeah. if that makes sense. No, I mean, totally. I'm not saying you have to agree with it, but if you I just want to make no, sure No, I mean, that's certainly a very respectable like way to think about it. There's, there's yeah. a lot of logic there. I mean, if you are going to say that there is a God, it's inherent for that to be, for the miracles to then be possible. Yeah. Right? So like. Yeah, oh, it comes with the territory. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. So I, I, I guess I want to probably respect your time. I appreciate it, but um, leave you with this challenge. Okay. And that is, you, you, you really kind of have. I, I don't want to say it in a negative way, but you've moved on beyond Christianity to what you believe in now, right? Sure. I wonder if you understand what you rejected. So in other words, do you have at least an intellectual understanding of what Christianity is all about? See what I'm saying? Because in order to fairly reject something, um, you have to understand it. Sure. Jesus offers the peace that passes all understanding. So if it's peace that you're looking for, <laughs> you know, um, for example, you know, the whole thing about the lady that I was telling you about the guilt, you know, I don't know if that's what you're, you know, like, if, you know, like, well, just the idea that you can't change the future, so why bother, or so why worry about it? Um, maybe going along with that would be, does our behavior here and now affect our future, you know? And if, and if we, and, and so if it does, then we can change the future somehow, right? Yeah. Or we have, you know, there is a consequence for our behavior, you know, and, no one likes to think, well, I might face my maker on Judgment Day, you know. Uh -huh. The Bible does teach that. Um, and so maybe there's this sense of guilt that some people have based on the idea that oh, I'm going to be held accountable, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so for me as a Christian, I have to say, standing on Judgment Day before God, I am going to be found guilty. Guilty as charged, you know. I've broken every one of the Ten Commandments in some way or another, you know. I've I've disregarded God at different points in my life. You know, I've, I've done a lot of horrible things that I'm not, that I'm ashamed of, you know, that I feel guilty for. Mm -hmm. So what can happen with this guilt? You know, the Bible says I wouldn't deserve to be with God in heaven. I would deserve the punishment of hell, which, okay, that doesn't make it any better. <laughs> it doesn't make the guilt any better. But, um, but then it also says, but God took our sins like god is just god is good he he loves people but he also loves justice there must be a punishment for there must be a consequence for the crime you know the punishment must fit the crime so so for me the good news is 
God took human form and took that punishment for me, you know? So do I have guilt? Not really. Like, do I know I'm guilty? Yes. Um, is that guilt going to haunt me the rest of my existence? No, because Jesus took the punishment that I deserved. And so now I live life with gratitude um, cause, cause of, because of what God did for me. And I have the opportunity to show him that gratitude and to express it through obeying him and through following him and living for him, right? Certainly. So for me, it's a different so form of existence of kind of the difference is how much do I have to do in order to get to heaven, which is what a lot of religions teach, you know, some, yeah. some kind of better afterlife. What do I got to do? Christianity actually teaches, no, what do we get to do in order to honor God? Because he's already given us eternal life through through faith in Jesus, you know? And so it's a it's a difference of a, a guilt-ridden life or a gratitude-ridden life, you know? And so, so I've been given every reason to have gratitude and I kind of want to walk around with kind of like a wonder and amazement, you know? And um, um, life is a precious gift and there's more to come and I, and I, I guess I kind of view like instead of thinking, oh, this is, this life is the only one there is. That's all there is. So I'm going to make the most of it. It's more like I'm going to live on into eternity, and be in God's presence. But right now, I'm in a in a situation where I'm, I'm, I'm in God's presence, but I'm also in the presence of evil. Like there's good and there's bad. There's there's a situ we're in a situation right now that will never happen again. So there's a sense that this life is all there is in in terms of it's there will never be another life like this. Now I, I don't know that for sure. The Bible doesn't really say. Yeah. <laughs> I, but I just see it as, a, as an opportunity to honor God by, by showing my gratitude and living for God, right? And, and this present actually becomes even much more important with the I, living with eternity in mind, if that makes sense. So I, I guess what I'm saying is, if this life is all there is, yes, it's precious, right? But if we, if we need to live with what we've done during this life for all of eternity, then it's, it's actually even more precious. I don't know if that, I don't know if that makes sense. I, I hear where you're coming from. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, I appreciate your, uh, your time. I don't yeah. want to. It was great talking that. to you. What well, was good. your name again? Jeff. Jeff, nice yeah. to meet you. I'd shake your hand, but COVID. How about yeah, uh, yeah. elbows? Can I give you my card? Sure. Okay. Yeah. It'll take me a few days to, to post the video. Hopefully it's not too dark out. <laughs> I'm a t uh, high school teacher. Oh yeah? And uh, Did so you teach I, here in the city? Um, back of the arts. Oh, gotcha. And, uh, but right now remote and I get out right. at four and then it's like, okay, how quick can I get out to the park to, you know, beat the sun setting. And <laughs> yeah, for sure. You only got like 30 minutes at that point. Right. Yeah. Well, it was really so, nice to meet you. Yeah, likewise. Um, so the uh, the YouTube link is on there oh, okay. about two thirds of the way down. And then my phone number is on the bottom. I'd love to hear your, you know, reaction to what you see. Or usually I write a, a few comments. So, so for each of the videos that's on there, you'll see. I usually like try to take one thing that was said or and just oh. talk about it a little bit. Or oh, write, okay. write about it a little bit. Right so, um, so like if you look at other videos, you can see what I've written, and uh, and then like I say, it'll take me a couple days to get this up. But right so. on. Well, I'm looking right. forward to it. Very good. All right, you have good a great rest of the night. All right, as well. Take, Take care. care.